Hello my friends, I'm Clover and this is Genuinely Approachable Sudoku and today we are solving The Cold Hard Factors by Philip Newman. This one was challenging for me, I can't lie. Um, I struggled both with how to solve it myself in the first place and also with how to present it to you guys. I actually got some tips from Philip and hopefully I can give you a nice clear walkthrough for this puzzle. So what's going on here? So we have normal Sudoku rules, meaning we're placing the digits 1 through 9 once each in each row, each column, and each outline 3 by 3 region. In addition to that, we have factor lines. So all of the lines in the grid, regardless of color, are factor lines. The colors are simply for aesthetics. And a factor line is a line where two digits that are directly joined to each other by the line. So like these two digits, or these two digits, or these two digits, etc. One of them has to be a factor of the other which means that one of them divides evenly into the other, one is a multiple of the other, and so on. They can potentially be equal, so for instance these could both be sevens, because seven is a factor of seven. Or they could be two and eight, because two is a factor of eight. They could be three and nine, because three is a factor of nine. They could be one and five, because one is a factor of everything, and so on. So we're going to start with some Sudoku. We get a five there because of these four fives. And because of these fives, we're going to get a five down here. And now five only has one factor within the realm of Sudoku digits. Well, it only has one factor except for itself in general because it is prime. And that factor is one. There's also going to be a five in the very center. That's the last five remaining in the grid. Now, that means we have a one somewhere in these two cells. And we have a one somewhere in these two cells. Now the next question I ask myself solving this is, where does 7 go in the top row and where does 7 go in the bottom row? Because 7 also only has one factor, it's also a prime, and there is nothing that has 7 as a factor within the realm of Sudoku. So 7 can only ever go next to a 1, but it can't go there because it would have to have something on its other side. And it can't go anywhere else on this line because the 1's already used on the line, so it has to go over here with the 1 right below it. And the same thing is going to happen right there. So that's a 7 and a 1 and a 7 and a 1. Now we're going to look at the rest of the line. So the next thing that I looked at was the digit 9. 9 can only ever be next to 1 and 3. And because the 1 is already all the way over here, that means if 9, well 9 can't be here, here, and here because there's a 9 right there. And it also means that if 9 was here, it would have to be in between two digits that are not 1 or 3, which doesn't work. So 9 is in one of these cells. And the only remaining thing that can go next to a 9 is a 3. The only remaining three thing that is either a factor of 3 or a multiple of 3 is 6. Now the only thing other than 3 and 1 that is a factor or a multiple of 6 is 2. And then from 2 we have to go to either 4 or 8. So we go from 2, 4, 8 or 2, 8, 4. So I can pencil in 2 and 4 or 4 and 8 there. So this is what this line is going to look like. And we can't do much with it now, but bear with me. Because we're going to do the same thing up here. One of these has to be our 9. And then a 3 and then a 6, and then a 2, and then a 4, and an 8 in some unknown order after the 2, because 2, 4, and 8 are all mutually factors or multiples of each other. But because there's a 6 in this column, we know that it goes this way around, which resolves this. And that's going to be a 4-8 pair, and now that we know which end it's on, the 8 makes this a 4, and then we get an 8 right here. The 6 resolves this into a 2 and a 6, so that's now going to be our 3 and 9 over here. And we get 4 and 8 there by Sudoku. And that is those two lines taken care of. And from there, hopefully, this is going to get a lot more straightforward. So we need another factor, a multiple of 4. We can't use 1, we can't use 8, we can't use 4 itself, so that's going to have to be a 2. And then these three digits will be 3, 6, and 9 to finish the region. These are going to be 3, 8, and 9. We can't have a 9 there, and we can't have an 8 here. 8 has to be between a 1 and a 2 because 4 is already used. So these are from 3, 7, and 9. Now 2, we've already got a 4, we've already got an 8, and we've already got a 1. So the only thing we can put the 2 next to is going to be a 6, which places a 6 right here. And that makes the last digit in this column a 7. 6 is going to go next to either a 2 or a 3. And then this is from 2, 3, or 8, and it can't be an 8 because there's an 8 right there. That rules 3 out of these cells and places a 3 right there. And that's going to be an 8 and a 9 in that order. Now down here, 6 has to be next to 1, 2, or 3. 1 and 3 are used, so that's a 2. That makes that a 3. These guys are going to be 4, 
6 and 8, making this a 4 because we have 6 and 8 in the row already. These will be 3, 9, and 8, and because we have a 9 in region 1, we're going to place our 9 right there. Now in this region we need 1, 3, 7, and 8. Those can't be our 1s, those can't be our 3 because there's a 3 in the column now, so that's going to be a 3. This will reduce to a 6. Now 2 can't go next to 7, so we eliminate 7 from right here. These cells are going to contain a 6 and a 7, and because 7 can only go next to 1, and the 1 is already used, so it can't go right here, this must be our 6, which will go next to a 2. And that will make this a 4. These are going to be 2, 7, and 8. Now 7 can't go next to either 2 or 8, so we're going to eliminate 7 from those two cells and make them 8 and 2, which makes this a 7. Now we can resolve this. And we need a 1 and a 3 to finish this row off. And these two cells are going to be 9 and 8. 9 is going to go between 3 and 1. It'll be right there. It makes this a 7 to finish the row. Now I need a 3 and a 4 here. A 7 there. Um, in these cells, well this one I'm going to need a 4. And in these two cells I'm going to need an 8 and a 9. 9 can't go next to my 2s, so that will have to be an 8 and that should be enough to finish the puzzle. And that is how you solve Philip Newman's The Cold Hard Factors. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. That was a bit of a tricky one for me, but I'm glad I stuck with it and ended up figuring out a pretty smooth path to it at the end because it really was very elegant once I worked out what was happening. If you want to solve it yourself, the link is in the description of this video. I will see you again soon.